Part of our practice is to reach this clear mirror mind. But what if we get attached to, I don't know, emptiness? You, you reach a certain point when you know if, that if you're not thinking, you're not suffering. So you become attached to this. If you How become you attached, the tree in the courtyard can help you. And the blue sky can help you. And the birds and the deer and the fox, they all can help you. Human thinking cannot help you. Why? Because you're so smart. So you know Buddhist thinking better than I do, which you is wonderful. It's not helping. <laughs> it's not helping me. I'm not smart. It's just... <laughs> Now you are defending yourself, so it's helping you, okay? So, when you refrain from thinking, no dualities, no concepts whatsoever, then, and only then, is your mind clear like space, like a mirror. In that mirror, there is no emptiness as a word, no enlightenment or suffering or any dualities as such, because you have no thinking whatsoever. So your smartness can rest. Then you see that the sky is blue and the trees are green. And that's helping you. Okay? And that's why it's wonderful that you came after a few months. I think you had withdrawal symptoms of the Dharma. So then you come again, you get immersed again, you get some good Dharma energy again. And if you don't think too much, then your conceptual mind does not break your mirror into small little pieces. And then you can stay clear. So if you make something in your mind, you make emptiness. Your mind makes it because you learned something from many books. That's okay. Just don't attach to it. Don't believe in it. Don't identify with it. Don't make anything. Kunsinim always said, don't make anything. Yes, sir. Because, uh, because it was so clear. He, he said it with so much love, compassion and wisdom that this overgrown thinking is not the way to realization. It's the way to analysis, it's the way to philosophy, it's the way to fully intellectual synthetic views and whatsoever, but it's not the way to awakening. He also said, put it down. So emptiness, put it down. Absolute, put it down. Enlightenment, put it down. Suffering, also put it down. Okay? <laughs> okay. Good. More questions? Uh, is compassion something you have to cultivate and make it, a ha make it a habit? Or when you reach a certain point, it, it kind of flow out naturally? Doesn't matter. You can cultivate it as habits. You can wait for the tipping point when it becomes spontaneous. Whether you approach from the form or the essence, doesn't matter. Just do it, okay? Don't wait for the right thing, because the right thing never comes. No matter how, be compassionate. I don't care. All right? Actually, um, I was very kind of compassionate people before I started practicing four years ago. And unfortunately, I feel um, I'm getting less and less compassionate if I keep practicing. Very good. <laughs> because then you see that compassion is not what you think, not even what you feel, it's something way deeper. As you practice, your habits unravel, they get dismantled. So compassion is not just a mental posture or some emotional habit. It's based on the experience of oneness, this one mind. And this is a spontaneous appearance of not just compassion, but wisdom too. So when your compassion karma or compassion habits disappear, don't worry, true compassion is coming. It's on orbit already and it will land. Okay? okay just see clearly, hear clearly, act and speak clearly and compassion happens by itself. You know what's the best compassion? that you don't know about. That's the best. You can't lose it. Okay. okay.